again a Microsoft Office program which you may have as an icon on your desk it's a red box Microsoft Office PowerPoint or found in the all programs box under the Microsoft Office software First, I want to actually show you an example of a PowerPoint presentation and some of the strengths and weaknesses of this presentation. So in this presentation right here, we can see that there's nice bullet points. The colors seem to stand out. There's definitely um, some sort of sentence structure or bullet points, but it's not too overwhelming. What about this screen? There seems to be a lot going on. The colors kind of blend in. The can you read this ends up blowing up and kind of moving off the page. Again, these are some features that you can do in a PowerPoint presentation, but it can often be distracting. Also, if we look at this slide compared to the first slide, there's a lot of material in this slide and it's really hard for the reader to maybe follow along and read. This is actually the same material, just presented in a different um, format. So we can see that it is um, six bullet points versus the paragraphs on the previous slide. Use text sparingly, select colors with care, keep unity in slide design and watch font size. Minimize animated texts and sounds. And in the end, is this slide easier to follow? I believe it is. So. Okay, let's go through here and just point out some of the features that you can do with PowerPoint. Most PowerPoint starts off with this format of a slide. This tends to be actually um, what's called the title page. So this might be the title um, of your presentation and um, the authors or group members listed here. Just by clicking on the box, you can automatically just start typing. Very similar to Word and other programs, there's several key features up here on the, on the top. Um, when you're wanting to add a new slide, um, just right clicking underneath and clicking on new slide is a way to start. We can see this slide's actually a little bit different. This slide has some type of, of title here um, with material and bullet points below. Every time you hit enter, a new bullet point um, pops up. If you're wanting to actually create a different format slide, say you're wanting to compare and contrast two different things by right clicking and clicking on layout, you can actually see that there's several different boxes, the title slide, title and content, section header, title only, perhaps a picture with a caption. This two content or comparison will allow you to compare oranges versus apples. So as long as we're spelling right. So some of the features. So here you're able to kind of see that you can make comparisons, make compare and contrast two different categories and you can kind of see how that would be set up. These are just some options that you can kind of consider. Um, again, you're just going down, clicking new slide to create new slides as you go along. On this home page here, one of the other features that students often look at um, doing is um, certainly the animations but also the slide design. By clicking on design, there's many different features that kind of pop up. When you click on these, you can kind of see what different formats um, or color schemes are part of the slides. Um, this does give you a, a good idea as to how things kind of are going to be laid out. But as you can see, um, when you do pick these, uh, depending on what you're choosing here, it does change the format a little bit. So you're just wanting to make sure that maybe you're choosing these um, before you stop before you start typing in um, all your material. Once you choose a design that you and your group like, you may also opt to change the colors by clicking on the color themes. And so we can still keep this format of the slides, but change the color of the slides. 
So this is another nice feature. Again, I think that the color does add to the presentation, but you're also wanting to keep in mind that you're not wanting to use this as a distraction. And as long as the material is clear, um, then that's a good, a good slide design um, to choose. Some other students kind of opt to look at some of the animations that they can choose. Um, and you can kind of play around in these to see, um, you know, do you want things to, as you're going along, be able to pull up the bullet points slowly? Do you want all the bullets to appear on the screen at the same time? And so these are different things to kind of choose in this, in this presentation. Again, you can certainly import pictures, um, links, cartoons, whatever you're kind of using. One thing that I do want to stress is when you guys are, let me see, I'm going to change the layout of this. Um, when you guys are working on your presentations, one thing that you're doing is hyperlinking your websites. So instead of actually writing out the website www.socialworkers.org, in the actual website, what you're wanting to do is highlight and hyperlink and then click in the website that way. This is a nicer format in a PowerPoint presentation to have the links actually embedded in the written work rather than have the website written out in its entirety. It's also a nice feature too because what you can be doing is pulling up the internet and if there is a website, um, say it's the library website and it's got a lot of, um, we can see this is a lot of text to kind of write out and there's always room for error. error. So by highlighting it and copying it, I can create a new slide here and say UMBC's library. Highlight, right click, hyperlink, and control V or right click and paste and click in the website there. So Again, you're not going to be able to see this link right in here, but you can test to ensure that it's working by viewing your slideshow. You can hover over, and we can see this is pulling up the social work website. Go to UMBC's. Oops. Go to UMBC's library, and we can see here that it pulled it up. So again, a nice feature about the presentation, and you're wanting to present a nice formal PowerPoint presentation in this class, you're wanting your slides to look neat and clean um, and professional. And one way to do that is to, in, to include these hyperlinks. Remember though, in your introductory um, slides, you might be um, gathering material from other sources. For example, um, in my introduction to the library, I might be addressing several quotes or material about the library. It's important if I'm citing statistics or um, paraphrasing material that I've gained from a website that I'm citing that. And so a way to do that is certainly to hyperlink and to include the date. So one thing that I typically do in my slides is to just put up here UMBC library and um, 2009. I'm actually going to shrink this font here. I usually do just make it kind of smaller that way. And then by hyperlinking it to the website, I've kind of nicely, um, again, stats and statistic and um, material that I have pulled or summarized from the webs website are here. But again, by having this hyperlink 
to the website with the year it's indicating this is not my um, actual voice or my ideas that this is something that I'm taking from us from a website this way and just by clicking in here it'll take you to that link again anytime we're presenting material um, that is not our own we're wanting to make sure that we're citing that material